Six thirty nine on News Radio eight fifty KOA. I am Ross Kaminsky. Thank you for spending part of your weekend with me. Earlier this week, while in China, President Obama made a bunch of announcements, and most people are talking about immigration. But he also made a surprise call for what some people call net neutrality. And net, net neutrality is just another example of how the left does so well. With with language, I mean, basically, they will call black white. I mean, they will call uh, Obamacare the Affordable Care Act, even though it's made health care much more expensive. And you can go on and on and on. Net neutrality is a very dangerous and bad idea, guised in uh, nice sounding words. Joining us to talk about it is Baron Zoka. He is the executive director of the libertarian group Tech Freedom. And Baron and I are here to do a little myth busting this morning. Good morning, Baron. How are you? Morning. Uh, so, uh, very, yeah, right. So, you know what? I'll tell you what. But a lot of listeners probably maybe have heard the term once or twice, net neutrality. But why don't you? Why don't we start by you telling us what they claim it means, and then we'll go to what it really means. Right. Well, that that's the, exactly the problem. Uh, people talk about it to mean openness, competition, freedom, not censorship online, all great things. So nobody's against those. The problem is it's sort of a bait and switch. So they, they, you talk about that rhetoric, and then you use that to introduce uh, a range of things. Some of them are ideas about how the FCC should police what uh, broadband companies do when they deal with content companies. And, and there's a range of options there. And then there's some really bad ideas about how to give the FCC legal authority over the Internet. And the problem is when people frame the conversation as just being about net neutrality, all those important differences go out the window, and, and the left has been able to move this agenda to push what really is about building, uh, I think, a, a primary mailing list for Elizabeth Warren, for getting people excited and riled up about the things that the FCC can't even do, while ignoring the differences that really matter uh, about how to craft sensible policy for the Internet. So Barack Obama didn't just come out and say, I want the Internet to be free and open. He came out and said, and I'm quoting, I believe the FCC should reclassify consumer broadband service under Title II of the Telecommunications Act. So tell us, Baron, what is Title II and what would that change mean? Well, it's not net neutrality to start. Title II is the uh, part of the 1934 Communications Act that used to regulate uh, and still does uh, telephone companies. It was developed for a monopoly network. It's basically the same way that we regulated railroads when railroads had a monopoly on carrying grain from farms. So Title II is, a, is one way to deal with true monopoly, and it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. And so in 1996, when Congress finally updated the Communications Act, the, the new Democrats that were running the FCC under Bill Clinton were very, very smart, and they understood that Title II would be bad for consumers, that it would, it would discourage competition. And, and so Bill Kennard, who was chairman of the FCC, started moving the FCC away from imposing Title II on the Internet. The Michael Powell, Bush's first chairman, finished that. And the result is that we have uh, almost all Americans in this country have at least two broadband providers, which is not true in many countries. And it was responsible to move away from Title II for driving investment and competition Google Fiber, for example, is starting to deploy, and they're avoiding Title II. They're not offering a voice service because that would subject them to Title II. So that's where the debate's gone, but Title II isn't even net neutrality. Again, it's this bait and switch. Now, one of the things that's interesting so far politically is that right after President Obama came out and said he wanted to uh, basically put this huge regulatory wet blanket over the Internet. The chairman of the FCC came out with a statement and then and then later made another statement um, emphasizing that the FCC is an independent organization and, and doesn't just do what the president said. And basically what what the chairman of the FCC said was that he would take Obama's comments basically the same way that he receives comments from from everybody else. And and consider them. And and what's really interesting is that this guy, FCC chairman, a guy named Wheeler, 
um, was a huge supporter of Barack Obama's, a big campaign bundler. He raised lots of money for Obama's elections. He was on Obama's transition team. And it, it says a lot about Obama's management style that he wouldn't talk to and wouldn't sort of give a heads up to the most important person in this conversation before just reaching out and tell the world, telling the world what he wants done. What are your thoughts on that? Well, he's really not supposed to, to talk to him at all. The FCC really is supposed to be an independent agency. And, and that's not just uh, some administrative law nerd point. That's really a core part of the United States uh, global uh, defense of free speech. Because for years, we've been going around the world telling other countries that it's really critical that their telecom regulators not be subject to political pressure, because that allows them to censor very easily on behalf of governments everywhere. Mm. And so now all of a sudden, President Obama has broke with, uh, with I, I'm not aware of this ever happening, uh, of the president telling an independent agency, let alone the FCC in particular, to do something particular. So that, that's really astonishing. And Chairman Wheeler is in a very difficult position because I think he's been trying to, to do the – the best that he can, and this issue has now become completely politicized. And the All right, I've got to hit a break here, Baron. But impossible. When, when we come back, what I want to talk about, there's all this conversation about Internet fast lanes. And I think it's important, again, that people understand what they are and what they aren't, because this is kind of the terminology that a lot of the liberals are using to say we need to regulate the Internet because we just can't have fast lanes. We're talking with Baron Zoka, the executive director of the libertarian group Tech Freedom. Check out their website. Just type in Tech Freedom into Google. You'll find it. And uh, right now, 646. Let's check in with Rich Groskopf, find out what's going on on the roads. Coming up on 644, we're speaking with Baron Zoka, the executive director of Tech Freedom. Check out their website, techfreedom.org. And also, we're, we're speaking specifically this morning about this idea of net neutrality and Title II and all this stuff. They've got a great website, don'tbreakthe.net. Baron, we've only got about four minutes here. Talk to us about Internet fast lanes. What are they? What aren't they? And what is trying to be done in their name? Well, it's another confusing term that's been uh, set up to, to distract this debate. The, the real There are no fast lanes. That's not the way the Internet works. The real issue is that the Internet works because uh, at routers, the, the places where all the packets go before they get to you, between um, tubes on the network, so to speak, uh, they have to be prioritized. And prioritizing them is what makes uh, services like voice work over the Internet. Video works. So you need to have that happen in order for, for certain services to work. If things like remote surgery are going to take off, you want them to be prioritized. So the question is, how do you regulate those to make sure that there's no anti-competitive advantage being given by cable companies or telephone companies or Google Fiber to certain applications? And, and there are ways for the FCC to do that that don't require Title II. That's why this debate has been so dishonest. So so basically what the left is arguing is that the big companies, that, you know, Comcast and AT&T, companies that people love to hate, will charge more. They're saying they'll, they'll charge more to give uh, Netflix faster access than they give everyone else. So and, – and they're using that kind of language to scare people into making them think that, that the effect will be to slow down everyone who doesn't pay this bribe. So exactly. but what's, what's really happening? Well, so, so that's exactly right. Uh, what's really happening right now is that there isn't a market for, for paid prioritization. There could be in the future, and we want a flexible approach to regulating that to make sure that government does what it, it always does when it enforces the antitrust laws, which is to, to distinguish between the anti-competitive behavior that harms consumers and new arrangements that may actually help consumers. So there's a way to do that, but the answer here is not Title II. And it's not the FCC trying to do this on its own. The answer is and always has been uh, for, con for Congress to take responsibility. And this is where the framing of net neutrality has been so unhelpful because Republicans actually have voted for two of the core three things that people talk about when, or mean when they talk about net neutrality, which is a transparency rule. How do broadband providers actually manage their networks? What's happening with, with uh, traffic management? Number two is a no-blocking rule. Everybody agrees that we don't want 
uh, broadband companies blocking content. The debate's really about how do you craft a flexible rule to govern these sorts of prioritization or other non-neutral relationships, and then what's the, the legal authority? Title II would be a disaster for the Internet. That's a bipartisan consensus. Seventy-four House Democrats opposed the idea when the SEC floated it. I've got 20 about, seconds here, Baron. So, so we could reach a deal if we, if we actually remove Title II, take it off the table, deal with core concerns. And until Republicans do that, they're just going to get uh, beaten up politically on this. This is a huge issue, people. You're going to hear more and more about regulating the Internet. We need to stop the, President Obama from forcing his giant statist view down our throats because it will destroy the Internet. Check out techfreedom.org and don't break the dot net. Keep up on the issue. Baron Zoka, thank you so much for your time this morning. Thank you. And follow us on Twitter, please. All right. We will do so. Keep it right here on 850 KOA.